Today in this video, I'm going to be answering the question, can I power my house, shop, outbuildings, other single phase equipment with a generator that's configured for three phase only? Now, the reason I'm doing this video is that I get a lot of emails, private messages through forums, uh, YouTube messages, etc. from people asking that exact question. They say, hey, I've got this generator that's configured for three phase only. I want to know, can I use it to provide backup power for my house? Um, almost every time people have a military surplus generator that's configured for 12208Y and uh, that's what we're going to use for an example today. I have an MEP004A. It's from the factory, is configured for three phase only and it is 12208Y configuration. And that's by far the most common configuration that you're going to run into with one of the uh, surplus generators. Now the answer to this question uh, can be uh, the simple answer is yes, you can power your single phase equipment with a three phase generator without any kind of rewiring or modification. Your 120 volt appliances, things like your toaster, um, ch battery chargers, you know, for a laptop, computer, whatever, uh, television sets, anything that plugs into a 120 volt, 120 volt outlet, that's going to run just fine on power from a three phase generator. Uh, those appliances, you know, there's no difference uh, in a one phase of 120 volts supplied from a three phase generator or a single phase one. Uh, so the answer is for the 120 volt stuff, no problem at all. It'll work absolutely just fine on power from a three phase generator. Now the problem comes in with your higher voltage stuff, the 240 volt appliances. Um, we're actually going to be supplying them with 208 instead of 240. And people have asked me before, hey, you know, I've got this adjustable voltage thing on my generator, can't I just crank the voltage up to 240? Well, uh, if you do that, the problem is, is that you're also cranking up the voltage on your low voltage legs. So instead of supplying 120 volts to your appliances, you're actually supplying them with 136 volts. Uh, some devices might not mind that, but some more sensitive electronics would. So you really need to leave the generator voltage at 120, 208. Uh, the problem is with supplying the lower voltage to the high voltage appliances is that uh, things like electric motors, uh, compressors, things like that, will actually be drawing a, a higher current at that lower voltage to produce the same power. Uh, things like uh, resistance heating elements, your electric stove top or your oven, clothes dryer, uh, hot water heater, heat pump, things like that. Those don't mind at all. They pr they're a little bit less efficient. You might notice it takes a little while longer to dry a load of clothes or, or cause a pot of water to boil on your, on your range top. but. Uh, you're not going to cause any damage to them, they just don't produce quite as much heat. Uh, things like electric motors are, are often rated for 208 to 240 volts. So some electric motors might not mind, but some might. Some might not be designed for that extra current that you're going to be sending through them at the lower voltage. And so my answer is to people, if you're going to be supplying your house with uh, 208 volts instead of 240, what you need to do is actually go around to all your 240 volt appliances and look at the label plates on them and see if they're rated for 208 or not. If they are, you have no problem. And, and my experience has been that really 95% of the electric motors that you see in houses are rated for 208 volts. Then they'll work just fine on it. Um, have run into a couple of AC compressors and well pumps that are not rated for that. So um, you do definitely want to check just so you don't burn up some expensive component in one of your appliances. Okay, one other consideration for pulling single phase out of a three phase generator is that uh, we're actually only going to be limited to about two thirds of the generator's capacity. And the reason for that is we're pulling power out of only two of the three legs of the generator when we're pulling single phase out. And we're still going to be limited to the, the current limits, the per phase current limits that are on that generator. So, we're actually going to only be able to get a little bit less than 10 kilowatts out of the generator. Uh, if we try and get more than that, what we're going to end up doing is exceeding the current limits for each leg, and eventually the generator will trip on over current. Now you might be asking yourself, why on earth would we want to provide single phase backup power and just leave the generator configured for three phase? You know, it's configured, you can reconfigure it for single phase. I've got my own video on YouTube on you know, directions on how to do that. There's a couple answers to that question. Uh, the first one is someone might not be comfortable diving into their generator and cutting up bus bars and moving wires around to do the single phase conversion. And that's just fine. In that case, if you get a deal on one of these generators, you can just leave it the way it is. Uh, 
whole single phase out of it, get two thirds of the rated power, and you got backup power for your house or your shop. Uh, the second reason is um, if, if you have some three phase equipment, such as is laid back here in my milling machine, you can use the generator and kill two birds with one stone. You can use it to provide three phase power for your three phase equipment, and you can also use it at the same time as, uh, as backup single phase power for your shop. And you know, truth be told, that's exactly how I got into these military generators in the first place. I got my milling machine and I had no way to power it. This is years ago. And uh, I ended up buying one of the MEP-004s, just like I used as an example here. And uh, that was my only source of three-phase power for a couple of years for my milling machine. And uh, it worked great. You know, I used it as backup power for my shop and three-phase power for my milling machine. And I just didn't need anything else. Now since then I've started to use my milling machine and, and my lathe on an almost daily basis. So I ended up building a phase converter so I wasn't burning diesel all the time. But, you know, for the person that's just an occasional user of, uh, of their three-phase equipment, uh, leaving the generator configured for three phases is an excellent option. You know, it gives you both kinds of power available from one machine. We'll take a quick walk around my shop here and just give you an example. Here's a good one. This is a 240 volt motor that's on my uh, two post car lift. And if you look right there, it says factory wired for 208 to 230 volts or 220. And so that tells me right here that uh, this motor has no problem taking 208 volts. It'll run just fine on it, it's not gonna overheat. Another good example over here would be my air compressor. Dust this off here. Now if you look here at the voltage, that one also has a 208 and 230 right there. So again, I know with my air compressor I'm going to be just fine as well. This, that motor is also not going to be damaged by the 208. Then if you also look at the amp rating, you'll notice that it's uh, um, 1.5 amps more at the 208 than at the 208 volt. Hey, so I've walked through all through my shop and, and checked all my uh, data plates and all my 240 volt devices and every single one of them is rated for 208. Uh, except for this one. This is my iron worker. It's an Edwards 5510 iron worker. You can see on there, it doesn't say 208. It just says one phase, 220, 60 hertz. Okay, right now we're running on commercial power. Um, I've got uh, the oscilloscope plugged into my welder extension cord, a 240 volt supply here. And as you can see, what we have is two separate sine waves, two separate waveforms. Each one of these is a 120 volt waveform. We'll go ahead and get rid of one of them here. Uh, this waveform is what you'd be getting out of a regular 110 or 120 volt plug. This is what your normal appliances, TV, things like that, this is what they get from the wall. And I don't need anyone nitpicking this apart right here because it's actually RMS value down to the zero is 120 volts, but just for explanation purposes. From the top of this waveform up here to zero volts, which is the middle, is 120 volts. And so that's what we, uh, uh, that's why we call this 120 volts. This is the, the peak of this waveform to zero is 120 volts. Now with 240 volt stuff, we actually have our second waveform right here. And as you can see, this waveform is exactly out of phase with the first waveform. And so if you take this peak here and go to that peak there, we actually get 240 volts between those two peaks. And that's how we get our 240 volts to our appliances. Now with three phase, and I'll go ahead and demonstrate that in just a minute. Um, we actually have three sine waves right here instead of just two. And instead of being exactly out of phase with, your, with each other, they're actually shifted. They're 120 degrees out instead of 180. So the peak of this waveform here actually moves over to about right here. And so, I'll, and I'll demonstrate this in a minute, but the peak of this waveform where it matches up at the same time on this one is no longer 240 volts because it matches up somewhere right around there instead of at the very peak and that distance is actually 208 volts instead of 240. Okay, I have fired up the generator and we're now running the shop on generator power. 
And if you take a look at these waveforms here, you can see, like I was discussing earlier, this waveform shifted over just a little bit. And now what we've got is uh, the distance between the peak of this one and where it lines up right here is actually 208 volts now instead of the 240s. This is actually shifted over to here. There's a beer right here and it's over here now. Hey, when we're hooking up our three-phase generator to supply single-phase power, what we do is we just hook our two hot legs of our single-phase power to two of the hot legs coming from the generator. But on this generator, we got three phase coming out, right? We got line one, line two, and line three. All you need to do is just pick two of them. It doesn't really matter. You can choose line one and line three, or line two and line three, or whatever. And it doesn't matter whether you hook red or black. It doesn't matter which one red or black gets hooked to. Just choose two of them and any two of them is fine. All right, and then we hook our white lead, or our neutral, up to L0 right here. That's all it takes. All right, we're back in the shop here and uh, you can see all my single phase stuff is is working just fine. We're now running on generator power, a 12208 single phase. You can see on the oscilloscope right there my uh, two legs and my three phase waveform. You can see my two post lift works just fine. <laughs> Some things up. The answer to the question, can I run my house, uh, single phase house, on a generator that's configured for 120-208? Uh, the answer to that is yes. 95% of the time, all of your 240 volt appliances will run just fine on 208. Uh, on the off chance that you do have an appliance that's not rated for 208, you can still run your house on generator backup power. Just make sure you open the breaker for that appliance so you're not supplying the 208 volts to it. Alright, I hope you found this video useful and thanks for watching.